Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com. I'm on Potholes Reservoir here in Washington State. Super clear water here in the springtime and I'm sight fishing. I'm in super shallow water. Let me tell you what I'm doing here. I'm watching a fish right now. I'm using a little tube jig. Okay, unobtrusive, but the big main reason I'm using a tube jig is because it's small. It's green pumpkin, so it's natural color, and the hook is towards the back. So if the fish decides to just mouth it, I can still get them. A lot of times when they're sight fishing, they only pick up the back end. This fish over here, I can see him cruising around between these bushes. So what I'm going to do, when you're sight fishing, never throw at the fish. Never do that because you'll spook them. What you want to do is throw it five to ten feet in front of them. So in this instance, he's going off over to the left. I'm going to see if he gets within casting range here because he's been wandering around. And what I'm going to do is try to cast in an area where he's heading. I'm about 10, 15 feet ahead of him. And he just stopped. And now I give it a little twitch, see if I can't get his attention. Here he comes. He's looking at it. Looking at the bait. I'm just going to let it sit for a second and then give it a little pop. See if I can't get his attention. Okay, he stopped. He's looking at it now. Okay, so this guy's a little skittish. I got a branch hook tucked up on my line, and he saw the branch move, and, it's, and it scared him off. So he's coming around this way. I'm going to throw again right back to that same spot, because I know he's going to come back. Here he comes, as a matter of fact. Look at that. Right on cue. And now I'm going to give it a little twitch. There we go. Oh, he's back. He's looking at it again. I got his attention. What you want to do is, is, is not make a lot of movement in the boat. As you can see, I'm remaining really still. Because if you can see them, they can see you. And so you don't want to spook them that way. And this guy's a bit skittish. And he's swimming all over the place. Look. Let me try again, get in that area. Another good thing you need to have, you need to have a good pair of polarized glasses. A real good pair to be able to see them real well. So don't skimp. Don't do the real cheap plastic ones. In this case, you're going to want a real good, you know, one that costs over 100 bucks. Maybe, you know, there's some pairs that cost 150 But when you're in a situation like this, you're not, you don't really care how much money you spend on them. The point is you can see underwater really well. I'm just going to let that bait sit for a minute. Let all the rings go away and let him settle down and kind of forget that I tossed it out there. He's, he's swimming around in this general area. So when he gets kind of inside of it, I'm going to give it a little twitch. Try to make it a little natural motion like a little bait fish or crawfish on the bottom. And he is swimming way over here to the left. So I got to wait till he gets back in the area where he's, he's been kind of swimming in. Let's see if I can't get his attention this way. Each fish has its own personality. And you gotta kinda figure out what it is that's gonna trigger him to bite. All right, so that guy wasn't gonna bite, but I see another one right over here. So again, casting way out in front of him. And he's gonna nose right up to it. And keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes sight fishing can be frustrating. You can see what they're doing. And uh, if you see what they're doing, sometimes, you know, you, when you know a fish is there, I mean, how many times when you're fishing, it's, you know, in, in muddy water or dingy water, you know, visibility is down less than four feet. How many times, do you, how, many, how many fish look at your lure and you don't even know it? But when you're fishing in clear water, you can see that. Unfortunately, you see a lot of fish that pass up your offering. So that's equally frustrating, I suppose. And this guy ran out of sight. I'm not sure exactly where he went, but I can see bluegill here. There's a little dune right here. And it's deep on each side. He might have been just crossing over when I saw him. 
So I'm going to keep going this way where I saw them, and maybe I'll come across them. You notice I'm not going really fast because if I see them, I mean I don't want to, I don't want to spook them. So that's the other thing when you're sight fishing, you don't want to move too fast. Now I have power poles so I can drop the poles really quick and stop the boat. So I have that advantage. But typically if you're, a lot of times what happens when you're, when you're sight fishing, you'll come across the fish and you'll see them, like right there. And what happens is you'll turn that trolling motor around and you'll blow it right on them. So in this instance, I saw them, I, th I threw the power poles down to stop them. So that's where power poles really come in handy. You can stop in an instant. Just cruise along this flat and saw this fish. See if I can't do the same thing. He's kind of, it's hard to tell where he's going to go. So I'm going to throw way up there and see if I can't get his attention away from me. So he's not looking at me. Hmm. <laughs> I got him to stop and kind of look. Now he's going, he's going to continue on his way. I'm a little too deep for my power poles. So I'm going to see if I can't move the boat just a little bit. He seems to be locked in this area. He might be thinking about nesting in this area at some point. Hard to say. As soon as I move this bait out of the way, then he comes back over to where he was at. That's really strange. That tells me that he's thinking about nesting over here. So I threw about four feet in front of him this time, and he stopped. And he's kind of looking this direction, and now he's kind of swimming around the other way. Let's see if I can't get the power poles in a little bit deeper. I'm right on the edge, the very edge of a flat. It goes off to about 10 feet very sharply right on the edge. The front of the boat's only at about a foot and a half. Isn't that amazing? Oh, ho, ho, ho. he grabbed the tail. I threw past him and brought it right to him. I'm gonna do that again. See, now you, this is where you try to figure out what their triggers are. What I did is I brought the bait, I, I threw past him, almost across him, and I threw it, I brought it right back to him and he nipped at it. He didn't get it in his mouth completely, but he just nipped at it, kind of barked at it is what I call it. So I'm gonna do that again. Let's see if I can't get him to hit it. This, this time I'm gonna bring it right back and kind of almost hit him with it. There we go, just like that. And that's how you do it. You gotta figure out what the trigger is. That's the whole key. Watch how they react to your bait and that's what it's all about. It's all about figuring out what the trigger is for this fish. Look at that, nice one. He just, he right in the roof of the mouth. Boy, he took it good. He has it good. I may have to get my pliers out for this guy. There we go, got it. Nice little buck bass, let him go. But that's the key to sight fishing. Paying attention to how the fish reacts to your bait and then adapting to it to get him to strike. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.